What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered if you could learn about Affinity Publisher in just five minutes? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen and in this video I'm going to be giving you an introduction to one of my all-time favorite apps, Affinity Publisher, in just five minutes. Now obviously, it's impossible to cover a program this expansive in just five minutes and teach you everything about it. So if after this video you really want to learn more and take it to the next level, I suggest you check out my courses in the description below. If you choose to take a course on Gumroad, you can use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. Now let's start out talking about what Affinity Publisher is because that's really important to understand and it's where a lot of people get confused. Affinity Publisher is an application that is aimed at document design and layout. This category of apps is often called a desktop publishing app, although that's a bit of a misnomer at this point because Affinity Publisher is available on the iPad, so you don't just have to do it on a computer that can run desktop applications. So this is a good time to talk about where it is available. Affinity Publisher is available on Windows, Mac, and iPad for a one-time purchase. On Windows and Mac, that purchase is going to cost you $69.99, and on the iPad, it's going to cost you $18.49. So what would you use Affinity Publisher to make then? Well, it's the equivalent of Adobe InDesign, except in a lot of ways, I feel that it's better. And so you would use it for things like producing documents like books, magazines, newspapers, that might be for print publication, but you can also use it to create things for web. For example, you might use it for social media posts. I use it for all of my YouTube thumbnails and things like that. So there's really a vast, vast range of things that it can be used for, and this range is even opened up more because of what they call Studio Link, which allows you to use the features of Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer within Affinity Publisher. So there's so much that can be done here with Affinity Publisher. Let's dive into the computer and see what it looks like. Let's just do a real quick tour of the layout here before we get started into some of the specific most important features that you need to know. You're going to find a menu bar right up here, and this is where you can access all of the different menu items. So under File, you'd find things like Save. And then down here, you have a quick access toolbar. This is very similar to the other Affinity programs, but the really great thing about this is that it has Studio Link up here. So up here, if you own Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, you can go ahead and you can click these and you'll see the entire interface changes to be that tool. So there's no launching other apps. If you need to edit a photo, you just go into Photo and do it. If you need to edit a graphic, you just go into Designer and do it. But let's focus in on the Publisher persona right now. So this quick access toolbar gives you access to a lot of the things that you might need. One in particular that's important is this windshield. This toggles the preview on and off, so you can see a lot of the margins and things will disappear when you turn that on and off. Then there's the contextual toolbar. This one changes based on which tool you have selected. Tools are found along the left hand side. So right now I'm on this move tool right here and I've got these options. If I change to my type tool, you can see I'm going to get some text options here. Okay, let's go back to the move tool. Here, there are some panels. Now this is different than a lot of the other programs, but there's these panels on the left that deal with pages, assets, and the stock library. So there's just a lot going on in Publisher. So they do have panels on the left and then studios on the right over here. So you can see you've got your color swatches stroke and there's a lot of different studios. There's going to be layers right here. And one that we're going to need in a little bit is text styles. So we've got all of those over there. If you ever need to find one of these, you'll go up to the window menu and then all of these here are the different studios. So you can open up different ones that you might need. Okay, that's basically the interface. So let's jump in and learn about, about how we would make the document. Over here, we have our pages panel and within the pages panel, you want to see all the pages that you have. So right now I have a document with facing pages. So if I click down here, you'll see this spread. So two and three here. One really important thing to know about working with documents in a program like a Fame Publisher is master pages. Master pages can be applied to a page to give it elements like page numbers. So let's go to the A master. We'll grab our little artistic text tool right here. And just at the bottom of the page, we're going to make a text box. Let's go back up to text, insert fields, page number. So you can see it puts a little hashtag there for the page number. To zoom in and out, you just hold down option and scroll. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to resize this a little bit here. I'm also going to make it centered and I'm going to make sure that it's centered on the page by using the alignment tool and centering it. Now if I go to page one, you're going to see a big one right there. If I scroll down then, you're going to find pages two and three. Master pages are really important. So let's go ahead and add some text. One of the easiest ways to add text is to place it from another document. Affinity Publisher is not a word processor. You need to be able to process your words somewhere else like Microsoft Word. So we're going to go up here to the file menu and choose file and place and we're going to get our text for chapter one. Go ahead and click open. This is chapter one of The Hobbit. Now when you do that, you see your cursor changes and it's got a little download symbol. That means it has something attached to it. So I can click and drag out a box and it's going to add in the text that we have there. Now there's lots of text within this chapter and you can tell that there's extra because of this little red arrow down here. That red arrow tells you that there's more that needs to be done. So we're going to go ahead and we can add that in. And the easiest way to do this is to hold down shift and click on that arrow. When we do that, it's going to go ahead and add all of the pages that we need. So you can see now we're going down to page 22. So that's how we would place text. We don't actually want to really type a lot of text here. The next thing that you might be wondering about is images. Images are super important. So let's go ahead and pretend that we wanted to place an image here on page five. So we're going to grab a frame tool. So remember tools are on the left and we're just going to grab our rectangular frame tool right here. I know that the image is square, so I'm going to hold down shift to keep that square. And now I have a frame to place my image in. Let's go ahead and go to file 
and place. And we're just going to grab this image and go ahead and place that there. We need the text to wrap around it. It's going underneath our picture. So if we grab our picture and move it, we can see there's text underneath. The wrapping is right up here at the top. We're going to click on this, show text wrap settings, and we're going to say that we want the text to jump. Okay, so the next thing that you must know about images is that they have that frame that we added and the image itself. And if you want to move the image, you can grab that arrow there and you can move the image within the frame. So let's say that this frame was actually a rectangle like this. We could then move our image around to show the part of it that we wanted. Okay, the next thing that you absolutely must understand within Affinity Publisher is styles. So let's go in here and let's move this down to another line. And style tells you how text should look. You can see there's a bunch of different styles here. So if I'm in chapter one and I change its style to be strong emphasis, that's going to change how the text looks. Let me go ahead and hit Command C to undo that. So if I wanted to turn this into a style, I would come over to my style studio and I'm going to click plus paragraph style. I'll call this chapter style. Then I'm going to click OK. Now I have a new style, which is chapter style. And if I wanted to change any text to that, I could just go to that text and I could choose chapter style. And it's going to change that text. So that's really, really useful. If you wanted to modify that style, you'd come over here to the menu and you would choose edit chapter style, which is not what it should say. Let's change it to say chapter. And let's say that we really wanted to change that font to something else. We wanted all of those to be in the quicksand font. And if I change this one to chapter style, it's going to change it to quicksand. OK, so what we've gone over right now are the absolute most important things We've learned how to place text and images. We've learned what master pages are, and we've learned how to do styles. Those things are absolutely critical to understanding Affinity Publisher. Okay, I hope you've really enjoyed learning a little bit more about Affinity Publisher here in just five minutes. Now, if you enjoyed this and you want to take it to the next level, I really do recommend that you check out my courses for Affinity Publisher, which are linked in the description below. I've got courses to introduce you to it, and also courses on more advanced topics like using Studio Link to use all the programs together. Again, if you take one of the courses that's on Gumroad, you you can use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. Okay, we'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.